Hey folks, what's going on? Arm and Hammer here, and today we're going to be talking about the 20.3 scoring adjustments that were just announced last night. Now, yes, I am wearing a puffy vest indoors because as my father's son, there's no way that I'm turning on the heater in this house. It is so cold outside, and it is so cold in here. Either way, neither here nor there, I just figured I would explain why I'm wearing this. Okay. The point is the 20.3 scoring adjustments have finally been released. We were waiting for them to be released, hoping that they would actually come out last week before 20.5 was announced because the 20.1 scoring adjustments took about two weeks and the 20.2 scoring adjustments took about two weeks. However, the 20.3 scoring adjustments have been delayed a little bit. Now, I don't know why they were delayed, um, it may have something to do with the ridiculous standard combined with the fact that the workout requires athletes to film it from a really weird angle. And therefore you don't really, you know, have the best data with which to make a decision when you're watching these workouts. So maybe that's why it took a little bit longer. I don't know. Maybe they had to figure out how they're going to penalize some like things that were, um, borderline, you may be questionable, but not clearly way out of line, that sort of thing. Either way, we finally have the scoring adjustments. And I think we're going to be getting the 20.4, 20.5 scoring adjustments probably sometime over the next few weeks. I can't imagine they're in a rush because according to the rule book, the leaderboard for the open is going to be finalized and set December 16th. So we still have about a month before the leaderboard for the open is completely finalized and the you know the blue line that delineates between all the people that made it in um, and they get their invites that gets set and then the invites get sent out and then the athletes get to choose whether they're going to be a team or the or basically they get to choose whether they accept the invites or not um, usually if they're declining the invites it's because they're going to do the team thing so you know, a couple things to keep in mind there is like probably Rich Froning and Scott Panchik are going to be above the blue line once it gets set and they're going to be competing on a team. So the blue line is going to trickle down two more spots. So that's the type of thing that we're going to be seeing happening in like late December to mid January. That's the period of time where after the leaderboard is locked down and the invites go out that we start seeing the repercussions of those decisions. But that is neither here nor there. I think it's just important to kind of give that context about when we can expect the 20.4 and 20.5 scoring adjustments. But let's go ahead and take a look at the 20.3 scoring adjustments. All right, here we go. So uh, very bare bones uh, you know, announcement here on the CrossFit Games site. 20.3 scoring adjustments. After review, the following athletes in the top 40 have received penalties and scoring adjustments for 20.3. Now, here's the deal. The reason why this is formatted the way it is is because they uh, changed it this year for the open that the top 40 worldwide each week would get their video reviewed for that workout. So it's not the top 40 in that workout. It's the top 40 worldwide at that time, right? So of all of those top 40 worldwide, we got only minor penalties to these athletes. And we're looking at two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 athletes. So less than a quarter of the total video reviews received a penalty. And all of those penalties were minor, minor penalties, lack of extension in the deadlifts, uh, failure to meet motion range of motion standards in the handstand pushups, uh, hands beginning, um, on or over the line. Uh, that was, that's basically a bouncing reps in the deadlifts. Um, we saw a couple of athletes getting, uh, some score penalties for false starts may way less than we have in the past couple weeks. The first two weeks we saw much, much greater penalties, much, much steeper consequences, um, and way more athletes getting popped with a false start. So let's see how many athletes here. Uh, these are all the athletes that received minor penalties, only minor penalties. Sarah Sigmund's daughter for lack of extension and deadlifts, T. T Claire Toomey, lack of extension and deadlifts. Jamie Green, Brooke Wells, Alana Fisk, Bethany Shadburn, lack of extension and deadlifts. Um, Alize Andriani, uh, failure to meet range of motion in the handstand pushup. Uh, Marissa Flowers, lack of extension and deadlifts and hands beginning on or over the line for the handstand walk. Paige Henry, hands beginning on or over the line for the handstand walk. On the men's side, left there is to Finitis, a uh, minor penalty for failure to meet range of motion standards and handstand pushup. We're going to talk about that in a second. Tyler Christoffel, Georgios Car Carvis. Street Horner, uh, Sam Kwan, Brendan Willis, 
all lack of extension in the deadlifts. Travis Mayer, Mark Juan Jones, bouncing reps in the deadlifts. So basically, according to CrossFit uh, and the video review process, biggest problem with this workout was the lack of extension in the deadlifts for the best athletes in the world. Cool. Let's talk about left airs to Euphanides. Um, and there's there's a, a second issue, maybe even a third issue to talk about with the entirety of this. One of the biggest problems here in general is that you would think intuitively that you could look at this list, you know, click a name, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, and it would take you to the video. Instead, it takes you to their profile spot on the leaderboard. Sarah's in first place, comfortably in first place. Congratulations, Sarah, uh, worldwide right now, but no video. We don't get to see. We don't get to see what it was that she did. So if we go back of all of these athletes, Brooke Wells, no video of all of these athletes. There's three videos left. There's Tiafanidis really went all out this year, submitted a video for every single workout. That's ballsy. I commend him for that. That's very difficult to do. There's a lot of people, me included, who keep our eyes on this sort of thing. And, you know, Talk about it when it comes out. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, I believe Sam Quant also has a video out on his workouts. He did all five of his videos. And I don't remember who the third one is. Someone else, Tyler Christoffel, I believe, also put out workout videos for all five of his workouts. So I would like to see in the future a little more clarity here. Um, I'd like to see the videos that are being submitted. The athletes aren't required to submit videos uh, that are public. They're required to submit videos to HQ based off of the video review process. So without these videos being public and available for us to see, without, without the fans of the sport being able to actually take a look at these things, um, it's really difficult to say where and how these penalties are being applied and whether it's being done correctly, right? The the biggest c- criticism that I had about CrossFit and its organizational practices around the games and stuff is that it's always been a very big closed book and they've opened up a little bit over the past, you know, year and a half or so, but still just having these uh, uh, these, these pieces of information, minor penalty for lack of extension. What was the penalty? Was it five seconds? Was it 30 seconds? Uh, what was, what's the, what's the tipping point? How many reps was it? Which reps was it? Is there a video that we can see that shows us whether or not this was correct and the interpretation of the rules and the application of the rules was correct. And, Right now, it's just really difficult to say that that we're getting a clear view of those things. And that brings us to Lefteris Tiafanidis. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, his score, I wanted to come back to it. Uh, he's, he adjusted score with 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Uh, he submitted a video for all five of his workouts. And I posted this on my Instagram because his measurements... Uh, in his video are questionable at best. And there's a couple things that are worth pointing out here um, that happen immediately. So we're gonna gonna see this happen basically immediately. Assuming that this is the same workout video that he submitted for the video review, which I don't see how or why he would have a different video. um, Assuming that this is the video that he submitted, the measurement is kind of, suspect, right? The finger placement as opposed to like a marking on the wall to mark the top of the head where he had it marked, uh, was kind of questionable as well. Like you don't really see that this measurement right here. It's hard to tell exactly what it reads, but it reads to me something like 35, potentially 36 centimeters. And yet when we see them come back and measure out this portion of it, that definitely is not 17 and a half or 18 centimeters. That right there looks like 
16 centimeters because that's the 17 centimeter mark right there that looks like 16 centimeters that's being measured and so he receives a minor penalty for not meeting the range of motion standards on his handstand push-up but the measurement is questionable right from the get-go so perhaps and, and early on in the video let's jump back here for a second early on in the video you see him come out and he has a gopro in his hands right there Maybe the GoPro video is what was submitted. So why isn't that the same video that's here on the open leaderboard? And if you scroll down to this submission here, he has over 100 votes saying that the submission is completely rejected. 55 votes saying that the score needs some sort of modification. 45 of them saying the workout is good. And the workout could very well be good. I mean, I watched... A bit of it and he definitely moves through it he definitely has the capacity to crush this workout but the measurements from the get-go are very questionable difficult to say that it's absolutely a thumbs up and at the very least should be you know a wonder about what's going on here so in a situation like this where the video that's being presented to everyone that is on the leaderboard there's only three videos of the submissions that are penalized in any way, shape, or form. Only three videos are available for the public to see. No major penalties after two weeks of a few major penalties, like legitimately changing people's chances of making it to the CrossFit Games. And some changes to like, you know, we had um, Cedric Lapointe, who was docked a major penalty for 20.1 and was able to come back and get it changed to a five second penalty for 20.1 after an appeals process. Um, I think Tyler Christopher also had a penalty that was uh, successfully appealed, um, but the news was never really released. And without with all of this happening behind closed doors, it's just very, very difficult to have the most confidence possible um, in the, in the process, right? So we have here, he has a score of 632. So this is the last 30 seconds or so of this workout. Um, he got a five second penalty, I think is the minor penalty. I think that's the minimum minor penalty. That's what they've been giving, I think for, uh, false starts and stuff as well. Incredibly fast on this workout to finish this workout in six and a half minutes. But as he's coming across the finish line, let's see, what is his time going to be? 24, 25, 26, 27, 27 or 28, right? So 632. So he got something like a four or five second penalty to this workout. And he was penalized for his handstand pushups. Let's see if we can jump around here and find his handstand pushups. So this is probably his second round. Maybe even, no, definitely his second round. Heels are good. Heels are good. Heels are good. So what exactly are we looking at here, right? His handstand pushups look fine. I don't really see any reps here that are super questionable. The camera is close enough that you can see where his heels are. But the biggest issue with this entire video is that his, his measurement is not clear that it's meeting the standards that were required. So if his measurement is not clear, that's meeting the standards that are required. And it se it might seem, by the way, that I'm picking on Lefteris Tiafanidis. Not the case. He just happens to be, uh, he was in the lead worldwide when this workout uh, finished. And he's only one of a handful of people whose video is actually available for us to take a look at. And I just happened to know what was going on here. So we saw two rounds of his handstand pushups there. Not a single one of those reps looked weird. So when he gets docked for the scoring adjustment, failure to meet range of motion hand standards in the handstand pushup, those handstand pushups didn't look that bad. So is that minor penalty being assessed for the measurement issue? And if it is being assessed for the measurement issue, What's going to stop people from just mismeasuring or badly measuring their uh, standards from here on out if CrossFit's going to keep using this ridiculous handstand push-up standard and then just taking a minor penalty for it from that point on? I don't know exactly what's going on here. 
And that right there is a sign that something is strange. Um, not that I don't know what's going on here, but that I don't think anybody can answer why one, there were only minor penalties on 20.3 Two, no one can pinpoint where these minor penalties are coming from or what exactly the minor penalty is. Like, I guess we could reach out to every single one of these athletes and ask them, Hey, what was your minor penalty? And they could tell us, but CrossFit should be providing us that information when they release this post. And three, specifically with Lefteris Tiafanidis, why isn't there uh, an acknowledgement that the measurements at the beginning of his workout are questionable at best? Without any clarity to those things, it's really hard to tell what's going to happen um, in 20.4, 20.5, because those video submissions are going to be ongoing for the next few weeks, at least. And there's going to be some questions that are going to be answered hopefully through those video review submissions. But if, for example, we're looking at uh, static um, cameras for 20.4, which I'm assuming 99% of the workouts are going to be submitted with a static camera shot, um, that requires the, the video review process to sort of assume that the far end of the pistol is going to look fine. Like how do you set up for pistols to show depth on both sides with one camera? You either show one side really, really well, or you show it from the front or back where you don't see the depth on either side. So what are you going to do there? And then 20.5 requires two different cameras, one camera that's only focused on the, the rowing monitor and one camera that's about everything else because they have to be able to prove that the rowing, uh, the rower is reset every single time. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think asking more and more of the athletes in terms of the, uh, the video review standards is not necessarily a bad thing, requiring them to have an, like a workout, like 20.3, where we saw, you know, a very difficult to, uh, to measure standard up against the wall for the handstand pushup followed by a distance that needs to be covered. I actually really liked that the video that left there is Tiafanita submitted, is room is 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 moving it's roaming it's it's a person with a camera phone who's following him around for every one of his reps and every one of his movements so it's it's very clear when he's hitting his rep range of motion for the handstand push-ups and the deadlifts and very clear what's happening when he's doing his handstand walks i really like that i think requiring that is not a bad idea you know many of these athletes they they they're you know well liked in their communities, it wouldn't be too difficult for them to just ask someone to be, Hey, would you be the cameraman? You know, I have my stationary camera. I have that set up, but I need you to be sort of like my roving cameraman. Just don't stand in front of the stationary camera for too long. That should probably clear up most of these problems. If you just put a little bit more responsibility on the athletes, however, you should be able to meet them halfway. You should be able to meet the fans of the sport halfway. You should be able to meet the athletes halfway and be much clearer about what is happening with these penalties. What is a minor penalty? Is it five seconds or is it 30 seconds? Is it just for lack of extension and deadlifts? How many deadlifts is a minor penalty? Is it five or less? How are we supposed to know where those movements are being met and where those standards are not being met if we, fans of the sport, spectators of the sport, analysts in the sport, can't see the videos that are being submitted? These are all things that CrossFit needs to, you know, strongly consider going forward. Um, and even with the 20.4, 20.5 scoring adjustments that I'm sure are going to be coming out in the next few weeks, it's important for them to maybe mention those things. Uh, they could probably make these adjustments for those videos and those announcements, even by just saying, hey, these are the specific penalties that were assessed, not just a minor penalty versus a major penalty. Either way, folks. There's a whole lot going on in our sport. It's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. That's what I am here for. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, maybe a like, a share, subscribe to the channel. We're closing in on 25,000 subscribers. That is mind-blowing. What is going on in the world? That's crazy. Really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. It's really kind of crazy. But uh, exciting times. Hopefully, you guys are a part of it. And if you're not, I don't know, subscribe. It'd be cool. We can do this together. Thanks a lot, folks. See you next time.